Huawei has announced the Ascend P6, an Android smartphone that's styled in metallic Apple vein, is by their reckoning and mine impossibly beautiful and is just 6.18mm thick. Stop now though please, this thinness thing is overrated. There's a 4.7 inch 720p display, a 1.5 gig quad core processor and an 8 megapixel main camera. Emotion UI sounds a bit pretentious but does offer significant enhancements over stock Android, not least of which are proper profiles and themes. A 2000 mAh battery plus various optimizations should give good battery life. The P6 runs Android 4.2.2 out of the box and it's going to be surprisingly affordable. Think £350 maximum. The Galaxy S4 moniker is getting everywhere with a new camera centric version, although in reality the S4 Zoom is more an S4 Mini with a huge point and shoot camera lens stuck on the back. The sensor is 16 megapixels, though still only a quarter of the size of the sensor in my beloved Nokia 808 PureView. Still you do get the same Xenon flash and a 10 times optical zoom lens, as with the S4 Mini on the front is a 4.3 inch QHD touchscreen, a 1.5 gig dual core processor, 1.5 gig of RAM and 5 gigabytes of storage out of the box. Come on Samsung, ship this thing with a micro SD at least. The zoom functionality is activated through a ring control around the lens, and ok it's a fair cop. I'm really looking forward to testing this one. There's also the Galaxy S4 Active, properly ruggedized. The main spec differences from the S4 are the LCD display, the lower spec 8 megapixel camera and the physical Android controls below the screen. Internal specs are almost identical, though the S4 Active is slightly heavier, of course, at 151 grams, plus it's 9mm thick. Fully waterproof and dustproof, am I the only one fancying this over the regular version? We have another top-end HTC handset launch, this time the Butterfly S, with quad-core 1.9GHz Snapdragon 600 alongside 2GB of RAM and a 3200mAh battery, wow, though sadly the latter is still sealed. There's 16 gig of internal storage plus micro SD there, which is one up on the, uh, well, the one. <laughs> There's the same 5 inch screen there with 1080p resolution and the ultra pixel camera with Zoe's, etc. And yeah, you get the twin front mounted speakers too. Assuming this comes in a bit cheaper than the one, I rather fancy it. Another news catch up, another Sony Xperia. They're going to run out of letters soon, surely. The Xperia M is mid range with a 4 inch WVGA screen, 1 gigahertz processor, 1 gig of RAM, and a 5 megapixel camera. Meh. M L P S T U Z Z L. Does anyone care about such a large and confusing range of smartphones? I know I don't. Oh, breaking news, also new from Sony, the Z Ultra with a whopping 6.4 inch Full HD display, as the teenagers would say OMG. Sony says this screen has triluminous technology to improve colours, let's hope so. Let's hope the display is better than the appalling one on the normal Z. The Z Ultra is just 6.5mm thick and is dustproof and waterproof just as the Z was. Continuing the specs overload, there's a 2.2GHz quad core Snapdragon 800 processor, stylus support, a 3000mAh battery and the other same high-end bits as the Z. Gulp. Is this what phones have become? Now in the past I've concentrated on still image quality capture from our phones and smartphones but more and more people are turning to video by preferring to capture moments animated they've got increased bandwidth available they can do more with a video and yet camera phone video tends to be wobble vision and pretty awful pretty jerky which is why I think the future really lies in optical image stabilization we've started to see this appearing now on the top smartphones the Nokia Lumia 920 here on the left and the HTC One here on the right. However, not all OIS systems are created equal. As you'll see, I've got the two phones here mounted on a jig so that every part of my motion, <laughs> my wobble vision, my wobbly hand is transmitted to both phones equally. Let's see how they do. Getting quite noisy as well. There we go. A good test of our OIS, this on a very uneven path. So I'm here at the West Somerset Railway on a very grey and overcast day, but hey, great for testing and there is indeed a steam train in action, which is great for a typical holiday footage and a bit of steam action there for you. Doing some gentle walking, I'm trying to hold the jig steady, but of course there's going to be some wobble. Let's see how the OIS systems do. Ravenham Hall in action.
And to make things even more challenging, let's head into the museum, into artificial lighting and indoors. Again, let's look at the smoothness of the video capture. So the light's not bad in here. Train now standing at platform number two is the 1025 service for all stations to find. This service will be calling at Crown Greenfield, Stagumper, Willerton, Watchet, Watchet, macro there for you. Blue Anchor, Dunster and Minehead. I think she's ready for the off. There we go. And that was a pretty good test of the uh, high amplitude <laughs> capture mics in both the Lumia 920 and the HTC One. That was pretty darn loud. Well, it really is pulling the thing down. So what did you think of the video quality and the stability for the two phones? I'd have to give the Nokia Lumia 920 the edge by quite a margin here. In terms of clarity, colours and stability, though don't think of the HTC One as a disaster. It does better when the light conditions are really, really low. And remember that both of these devices are optically stabilised and that similar video from traditional phone cameras, perhaps software stabilised only with me walking and wobbling, would have been far more unwatchable. The HTC One's camera lens is the bit that's stabilised and it can respond to two axis movement whereas the Lumi 920's camera is mounted in a three axis compensating active cage which is clearly the way to do it. Look out for a whole raft of copycat OIS implementations making their way onto the smartphone scene in the next 12 months and then look out for a whole raft of patent infringement lawsuits. <laughs> Maybe a water wheel and a steam train under overcast skies isn't properly cinematic. And I'm sure you'll find your own far more interesting subjects in far more interesting locations. What's clear to me though is that, especially with the current Nokia units, including the new Lumia 925, 1080p video capture on the go has never been more practical and more capable. I was really impressed. In fact, the output is so smooth I'm considering shooting a sci-fi feature film on it. Phone Show 2, The Wrath of Steve, got a certain ring to it. You'll find the auditions booth over there. <laughs>